everybody. My name's Al, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, it's just, it really, I mean, what I'm feeling now is just an honor to be here again, an honor to be available to share the message of love, of connection, of our, just the vastness of what it is to be a human being, that the joy, the potential joy and the potential love it is to be a human being on this planet now, and how it's really our calling to come together and to be able to serve joyously and lovingly and to just serve the love. And then the question would be, what is the love? What is unconditional love? What is that love that's so grand and so vast and so infinite and so inclusive that nothing and no one is outside the range of that love, that no one and nothing is outside the experience the ability to experience that joy and that connectedness that we really all all are and and in our heart of hearts we know it and the ways that we separate out and the 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 fears that create that separation we know are so old and so used up and so useless that they're finished that they're melting down, that they're dying by the weight of their own disharmony. And such an opportunity exists because there's so much love and so much hunger for love just bubbling up within every human being even though sometimes on the surface it's not exactly seeable with normal human eyes. But you can just feel it. You can just sense the necessity for us to come together to save this experiment, to save the planet, to save the species in a true sense, for us to come together and to recognize our glory, that the Father and I, the Goddess and I are one. And there are so many manifestations of that. So many people in so many areas are letting that experience that they've had of that love, of that oneness, manifest, bring that into the world, bring that into the world through music and art and television and media, and just vibrating that. And tonight's guest, as the guests of Bridging are, has dedicated his life, his, more than that in a sense, it's just his, his passion, his fire, his necessity to serve the love. It's not even something he can choose to do anymore. It's, it's a calling, it's a way of being, it's, it's his way of having love in motion. Rasuli is a world-renowned visionary artist. He's the founder of Fusion Art International. And his art translates that spiritual experience from inner from the subconscious through meditation into art in, onto a canvas and you'll see two paintings tonight that just scream that scream love on canvas scream love in motion and fusion arts main theme is co cosmic unity and this method of, of bringing that love onto canvas is what he's teaching throughout the world I mean, there are fusion artists, and many of them have manifested extraordinary paintings for the Bridging Art Project, which I'll talk about, as has Rasuli. And it's just a way that love can come through, a way that we can experience love and share it with the world. And his most recent book is Inspirations of the Heart with a former guest of Bridging, you know, well known from Agape, the Agape Church in Los Angeles, and uh, the secret book, Michael Beckwith. So that opportunity is here for us. And we have two beautiful videos of, of a workshop done, a fusion art workshop, and also the evolution of a painting that you can see the manifestation, you can see the creativity, you can see that spiritual experience manifesting on campus. And we have two beautiful paintings of Rasuli. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's a few times recently we've had a show where an artist has brought in videos and their art, and it's just, it's their show. It's the Bridging Heaven and Earth show 
of that love manifesting on canvas through that experience, through fusion art. So it's just really an opportunity to settle in and allow that love, that way that love manifests to, to change your world and to really rock your world, to really feel that passion, that fire, that love. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first fusion art video and just a beautiful show tonight. So join me, please, in a short meditation. Thank you. So the first video is this beautiful fusion art retreat, Rasuli teaching this beautiful retreat. Look at all the people, look at their faces, look at the fire, look at the hunger, look at love manifesting. So fusion art retreat, enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So wasn't that a beautiful video of a retreat? You could just feel the love. And the painting you're seeing in between Rasuli and I is his Bridging Heaven and Earth piece that he did specifically for the Bridging Heaven and Earth art project. It was his manifestation of bridge, what Bridging Heaven and Earth, as it came through him, it, the whole project, I forgot to mention it earlier, came as a vision that we put out to the world that anybody who wants to, it's infinite and inclusive, to do a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And these are the types of extraordinary pieces. Now, Rasuli is a master, but anybody is welcome, no skill level, just in the intention to heal, the intention to be part of the acupuncture, the healing of the planet. So anybody who wants to join us is welcome too. So. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for So why don't you me. talk about this masterpiece here, how it came through you and... I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we have it. Now the show is just about it. But I'll tell you in general All what right, happens. Yeah, right. you know, this particular one is interesting because uh, I did one uh, with the idea that I was, you know, doing this thing. And... Uh, one of my collectors came from Italy, and they picked up two paintings, and this one I was just finishing. It was done, and I had just photographed it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's on our website. Yeah, I know. It's on the website, yeah. So they, they wanted to take it with them to Italy because they wanted it to be rolled, and, and, uh, and so they, you know, through, they wouldn't have problem on the plane with it. So they took it with them. And then I thought, wow, what am I going to do for bridges? So I did another one. I thought I'd do another one like the one I did. But you see, I cannot copy myself. Right, right. So I started with the idea of the same concept that I had, but it ended up to be this. Wow. But you were talking, we were talking earlier about how, you know, the feminine energy and to bring the worlds together and, you know, that the symbolism in here is of that, that oneness, that unity, which is part of all of your, your manifestation. Right. See, the unity that uh, we're dealing with is the acceptance of the two important, completely opposite phenomena. One is the physical world, and one is the mystical world. So physical world combined with mystical world becomes a being. A life of its own. Exactly, it's a, it finds a life of its own. Imagine that we have a balloon and we have the air that goes in the balloon. Now the air is continuous, it's everywhere. That is called the soul. Uh, or in the, uh, in the East, they call it Ravon, which means the flow. They don't call it the soul like we do. They call it Ravon, flow. So the flow, as it's going through, it comes inside this balloon and becomes the energy that makes this balloon to be what it is. So the balloon expands into you, I, Adam, Eve. And then the combination of the two work together. Without the air, balloon is a rubber piece of nothing that you bury six feet under. And the air without the skin is expansive. There is no visibility about it. There's no way to see it. So the two together make it. What my paintings are about is the union of the two. It's the union of the mystery and the physical world. Physical world and mystery have a beautiful relationship. Mystery attracts and physical world expands. The attraction and expansion, when they work together, you have a person who is in full balance in his or her life or you have a tree that is in full balance, or you have anything, a mountain, a sea. That union of the two, the pure union, the, the, harmony. Pure, the harmony that makes that oneness. So in my paintings is those two that we're dealing with. The physical world is portrayed as beauty. This is what my religion is. 
You see, I, uh, I take beauty in. I receive beauty. I receive nothing but beauty. When I look at anything, I see the beauty of it, not anything ugliness. The beauty of it, I take it in. So what goes in is going to come out with the same nature. So the nature of what comes out becomes beauty. So my religion, my practice, is to take beauty in and put beauty out. So when I go to watch the sunrise in the morning, I sit there and I take the ultimate beauty that exists. And that comes inside me and I ask it to burn out all the ugliness. And as it burns out the ugliness, the beauty develops and beauty wants to express itself. So I paint, I write, and all kinds of everything that we do. You vibrate. Vibrates from that beauty. So that's what the combination is in my paintings. The physical world versus the mysterious world. The world of mystery is the feminine aspects of existence because it becomes attractive. It has a lure of its own. And then the masculine part uh, is the physical world. So physical world is expanding into a dream world that is in the, uh, found in the world of fantasy. That union is the bridge that I'm talking about. It's earth and heaven. Yeah, the bridge between heaven and earth. Right. This is a good show for you to be on. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to fit pretty good. But we knew that, right, when we, we met that, yeah, that I think there was a really beautiful fit between, yeah. you know, energetically. But yep. what we're trying to do through television and the media, and you're, you know, doing through art and writing and the other. And that's the power, because, you know, we know that the artists are the ones who can bring the hearts together. I'm not talking about the mind and the rationality and, and the calculations and politics and all that. I'm talking about the hearts. In order to bring the hearts together, you need artists to bring them together. You need creative minds to bring them together. Not necessarily artists, because one of the problems we have is we've left the creativity only to the artists, not knowing well, that we, we all Well, we define artists in a way that limit, is limiting. I mean, right. everybody's an artist. Right. Everybody exactly. has creativity. Exactly. So that development of that artistic ability is going to bring our hearts together, because when I sing a nice song, it goes through your heart. And then our hearts connect together like that. So imagine each heart is like a pearl. And there is a string that goes through these pearls. And the pearl has to have holes in order for the string to go through it. If my heart is not open, the string doesn't go through it. So the heart is not going to be connected to your heart because it's just, you know, it's closed. Now what goes through that string is love, is God, is what you called earlier, you know, unconditional love. It's the string that goes through. Now if the heart is not open, then the string is not going to go through it. I could have a lot of money, I could have all kinds of stuff, but I'm miserable. Why am I miserable? Because my heart is miserable. I don't feel connected. Exactly, exactly. So this is our duty, and I'm, I'm so happy. I mean, when you asked me to come on this show, I felt so good because we've got to merge, we've got to come together to make it clear about this unity that we're talking about. And the unity is to accept that being and non-being coexist. There's no separation. There's no separation. Without the mystery, there's no movement in the being. Mystery is the, 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 the father of creativity. Mystery is the father of all the inventions. If there was no mystery, there would not be any invention. There wouldn't be any, you wouldn't even want to get out of the bed. So mystery is, is causing that movement, that union. How can you say, let's destroy that? Or let's destroy this? 
how fool can we be? Well, look out there. We could be pretty foolish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it really is. I mean, how, do, you know, how did we become so disharmonious that there's such separation between so many things? Yeah, right. I mean, I think that's the nature of this experiment, and now is the time for us to really come together, as I said, to open joyously and lovingly and, and really collaborate and really be supportive of each other and really just be so delighted in everybody else's gifts and to, as much as we can, bring those gifts together. Beautiful. And I hope those that are watching this program would not watch it to learn something. It's not about learning. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I'm, I'm not about learner or learning. I'm actually, I'm the unlearner. <laughs> so it's about unlearning in order to allow your heart to expand. So don't try to listen to what we say with your you know, mind's ears. Let your heart take it in and be a part of that movement that we are the, you know, the elements of making it happen. Neither one of us or anybody in that tremendous world of unity that exists. But we could be little soldiers guided by generals that we're not aware of. And then we get to do what we're supposed to do. If we're in harmony, there's no separation. You know, there's no privates, there's no generals. There's just, you know, I describe, and we've talked about this before, and you have, you know, it's just love in motion, whether it, you know, comes through a, a television show, a piece of art, standing in line at the supermarket. You know, you're gonna be vibrating that infinite, that oneness, that love, and then whatever you're doing is just, harmonious and, and putting out the vibration that is changing every atom on the planet. Yeah. And, and the more and more we do, all do that, you know. And the funny thing is that, see, love is not something that, that you would uh, intentionally get in it or practice to get in it. Um, love got to develop. And the development of love is so interesting. Rumi says, uh, he says, when I began to write about love, the pen broke. Only love can describe love. Yeah, if there's an I in love, then we're separate from it. Exactly. There's, you know, and, and again, Rumi has this little tale, little story. A lover knocks at the beloved's door, and the beloved says, who is there? And the lover says, I. And she says, go away. There's no place for you and I in this house. So he goes and meditates for a year and comes back, knocks at the door. Who is there, she asks. It's you. And the door opens. Right, exactly. So it's really the concept of love is, is to, to lose your being. Earlier I was talking to one of my, uh, you know, co-fusion artists, and uh, she was telling me that, that uh, now she's really in love with creating. And, uh, and she said that, but she still has to cope with working and taking care of the house and all of these other things, and that's a big burden on her shoulder. And I said, don't tell that to me because I'm a master of dealing with these in my life. I mean, the moment I have a load on my shoulder, I, I unload and I start from nothing again. And I love that. So the attachments for an artist becomes a pain because it's your attachment and it stops you from the creative power. And that's for everybody else too. Attachment stops me from creating. So I've got to disconnect myself with my attachments. How do you do that? You know, you've got your daily work that you've got to do. If you don't, you're going to be, you know, in trouble. That's the theory. Exactly. And so the way to do it is to not be slave to it. The moment you not become slave to it, it becomes your slave because it cannot live without you. Because your attachment is attached to you. Let that be 
following you rather than you following it. How do we do that? We begin with very simply by imagining and developing this fantasy world that would help our perception to develop. So we begin to imagine, as I'm doing my daily thing, whatever it is, washing dishes or anything that I'm doing, I begin to see beauty in there. I try to see reflections of the light in there. I begin to see that guides me into something outside my physical attachment. And you realize that, my God, I've washed the dishes without putting my attention to the dishes. Yeah, I was somewhere else. I was thinking of something else. Exactly. I was right. somewhere else. So this is the whole concept. You begin to let go of everything that you're doing, doing as not taking your full attention. So you allow your perception to develop. And when your perception develops, then that becomes the power of creativity. You're in the moment. You're alive. Exactly. Right. I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, you're, it's beautiful, Asking me really. Questions. No, really, yeah. it's beautiful. But I love sharing things with you. Every time we talk, we talk for hours. And when you told me we have one hour program, I thought, what are we going to talk about in one hour? But both yeah. of us could talk for three, so exactly. it's not the problem. <laughs> so, you know, the interesting part, when we first met, I remember talking to you about this, and I, I thought it was really interesting. that, And I said this at the opening. I mean, you know, at some point, it's... You can't do anything but serve the love. I mean, you can't, you know, really, that's, you know, you caught fire at some point. And that, yeah, why don't you talk a little what bit. What a beautiful about thing that to discuss. It's so beautiful because love has different phases. See, the first phase of love is to give yourself to nothing. Become what, what Hafez says, he says, uh, says, he says, to express the love to you, I can only sweep the dust of where you walk with the lash of my eye. You see, that's the type of giving to love. Now, how many people are doing that? How many people are doing that? You know, we have plenty of doctors. We don't have enough patients. That's what the problem is. They're not that longing, that pain of wanting. Otherwise, the remedy is all over the place. Every time I look at anything, it's inspiration for me. And it starts a whole new painting. It's inspiration for anybody to do anything. If I was in business and I would look at this thing in here and I begin to see, wow, let's see, this comes from here. And, and I begin to think of many ways to be creative about doing something. I don't have necessarily to do that. But just developing that perception takes you to the next level, next level, next level. You get to a point that you're perceiving a creative world that you're creating constantly. I sit down and watch a movie, but I probably see the first five minutes of the movie. From there on, the images are a part of my story that I want to develop. And I don't hear what's going on. I have no idea. There are movies that I've seen like 30 times. And if you ask me what the name of it is, I have no idea. Or what is it about? because I developed that perception by looking at it. Why not enjoy that perception? Enjoy developing on that. That's very valuable as, lo as much as it's entertaining. Develop your perception, have these fantasy, these dreams, develop them as you drive, as wherever you go. Allow that perception to expand. And as the perception expands, it leaves room for beauty to enter. I think that what happens a lot is people get caught up in the reasonable world, the, the, you know, the physical world. Like we talk a lot about that we're hurtling through space on a ball. What's reasonable? So once you start off that really nothing's reasonable about the whole thing. Right. You know, you can throw that whole reasonable out the window and then you, you're expanding, you're, you're moving into the infinite, you're moving into the unknown. 
and that's really what people want to experience. You know, is you know the bridge heaven and earth to experience that infinite quality. Do you have a minute for me to tell a little yeah, tale? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to go back to another poem by Hafez. These days I'm all into his poetry because he's becoming a major, major uh, impact on me, on my art. Constantly it's, it's, uh, it's coming through. So he says that God created the universe. دوش وقت سحر از قصه نجات هم دادند و آن ظلمت شب آب حیات هم دادند چه مبارک سحری بود و چه فرخند شبی آن شب قدر که این تازه برات هم دادند He says God created the universe in like we know in, in uh, six days and night and then uh, realized that I've created this whole universe, but I haven't created myself. So God asked the angel Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel, to bring a handful of dust from the earth. So Archangel brings that handful of dust, and God who spent 40, uh, spends six days to create the whole universe, spends 40 days and night on this, dust to manifest himself or herself in it. And once she's sure that it's her, then puts it in the universe. The moment the universe becomes aware that there's a special power in here, uh, wants to utilize it, wants to benefit from it. So God asks the angels, or tells the angels, to make a box to put himself in it, that is the heart, that is himself, put it in that box. So the angels create the body of Adam. So Adam is the box that love goes in it, God goes in it as the heart. The moment the Adam, or the human being, becomes aware that I've got a power that can do wonder, wants to benefit from that power to his own ego, to his own self, rather than be expansive, be divine. So, wants to bring it inward, and then the, the great hand, the divine hand, comes and separates the mind from the heart. So the mind doesn't know that God is inside of, inside of it. The two are completely separate because they were cut off. So they're not aware of it. So the mind is looking for God outside, not knowing that is inside. And that causes all the more fights all. And this is what That's Hafiz right. says. Right. It's a beautiful little story that he says in beautiful poetry that I've been translating and I'm so proud of it. That's beautiful. Yeah. So maybe what we'll do now is have the second Ratsuli video. It's a beautiful evolution of the painting that he started. You'll see basically an empty canvas and how it evolved and how he turns it upside down and how he moves it as part of this, the retreat that you saw earlier. It's really beautiful, so enjoy. Evolution of a painting. Oh, I'd like to see it too. <laughs>
Well, welcome back. So it was amazing to see how that painting evolved. Beautiful. And the painting you're seeing in between us now is Joy of Togetherness. Why don't you talk a little about the Joy of Togetherness? That would get us a good start for this it's section. It's the fun that we have now. That's the Joy of Togetherness. Right. We just hold hand and that's right. it. There we go. There we that's go. Joy of Togetherness. That's the concept. It's, uh, see, the oneness takes place when we lose the identity like we talked about. The joy of togetherness is when we lose our identity in that string to bring us together. So this is basic theme in this painting. But then you see these cycles that you see in most of my paintings. And the cycles are related to different cycles of existence. Uh, see, the reincarnation, to me, takes place at the same time as we are carnating. So it's, there's, once you go there's beyond There's an overlap the, of everything. Exactly, once you go beyond right. the third dimension, we don't have time. So these dimensions, we're not aware of. So in a painting like this, when you look at it, see this line in here, is the physical dimension that connects us with earth, with the vegetation, with beings and all that. You see it usually in, in many of my paintings in different forms. This one is the mystery. It's the darkness that we are seeing it as abstract because we create our own visual images of it or concepts from it. And then you go into this other line in here that becomes the joy of living, is the spirit of living. From this, we have in the joy of living, and then we get into turning into the soul and go to lose any physical form into to divine. So this happens at the same time. And that's one of uh, the concepts that you see in this particular painting, joy of togetherness. That togetherness is on not only in one dimension, it is all dimensions. We would be truly together if we are together in the two-dimensional world and the three-dimensional world and the four-dimensional. And, and once you go beyond one, it's infinite dimensions. So we are together in infinite dimensions. Well, we couldn't have done anything but start out together. See, that's the thing when you go back to the one, to the beginning. Exactly. That's what made us. <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, you know what I mean? Sometimes we, right. we take a slice of infinity and ha it has a beginning and an end. Yeah. But if we can just leave the infinity open and go, you know, kind of go back to the home, go yeah. home, then yes. there's only one. Rumi says, Zendegani ashti zet hast. Life begins with the union of the opposites. Union of the opposites makes life. You see, it was the union of my father and my mother that made me. It's the union of the two that makes the life itself. One without the other, soul without the body doesn't mean anything. Body without the soul doesn't mean anything. It's the union of the two that makes it. And this you know, brings us to a very important issue that we're dealing with these days. It's the winter of our economic development. It doesn't mean that we are dying, we're destroying, we, whatever, all of these. We are in the winter of our economic development. And that means that we need to develop strength. We gotta develop our roots like the trees do in the winter. The strength that we want, we gotta develop because undoubtedly the spring is gonna come. And we should be ready for the spring to come. So right now is the season of rain and, and long nights and, and uh, darkness and the pain and that the roots of the tree has to go through to get into the bottom. Deeper that it gets, the greater it is. Deeper that we get into that mysterious world, the greater chance we have for developing strength. So what do you do now? 
It's the time to fill the warehouses. I'm working these days uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock at night. I've broken most of my connections. I've reduced my teachings into once a month uh, for one day. And all I'm doing is spending time to fill my warehouse. I'm painting constantly, writing constantly. What am I doing these for? I have no idea. I want to fill the warehouse. Because I know there's going to be time coming up soon that I got to, you know, bring them out and I'm going to be ahead of the waves. So I'm very creative now and trying to move towards the next level. And this is how we develop in the winter just like a plant does. So the first thing to do is to recognize the fall was there in order for me to lose my leaves. To lighten up. To lighten up. The whole idea is to lose all of these, to lighten up so you can develop that, that roots to get deeper, to get more stable, so we would be ready to blossom. And reducing all the expenses as we can, which means getting rid of all the leaves that are hanging on us, and then fill the strength, fill the darkness, fill that area that is a void, fill that power, create new jobs, new ideas, new concepts. New paradigms of new all paradigms. the old ways. Yeah. Whole thing is gonna be changed. Right. You cannot think of anything on the past. It's all new things. Right. In I'm this move moment, how, how would we do it if we never did it before? Exactly, exactly. And I think we are, it's a great opportunity. This is a, one of the most, the greatest opportunity. We're so fortunate to experience that now. I've been in this country since 1963. I've seen seven recessions and seven recuperations. So I'm convinced that the recessions and the recuperations, I'm convinced that just like the seasons, it continues. What I know now is to be prepared. And that's where my energy goes now, to be prepared for the upcoming of the great opportunities that comes. But to carry the old stuff doesn't mean anything. No, that, that is, that's what's changing. I mean, right. that, because they weren't like rooted in love and serving love. I mean, I think really that's, that's the key words now, is how do we build paradigms and build ways of being and build relationships with money and people and with love at the root and exactly. to serve love. See, system wants to separate us from having our hearts connected. And by system, I don't mean this country, I don't mean any other country. I mean the whole system. Right. The, the brain It's more comes. based on fear. It's more based exactly. on reason. It's more based on Doubt, separateness. Doubt. Which is the father of them all. And then love wants to unite us. So as we develop that love, then the unity takes place. Fear goes away. Example, take this rose. Sorry. Might not be as easy as you think. No, no but I got it. Well, Sorry. we put a rose in. No, you got it. No. Look, at, look, look, look at this rose. A different way that you've looked at it before. Just for the first time, look at this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, as you are looking at this rose, there were moments that you experienced that you were not here. You were not in front of the television, the cameras. You were nowhere in here. You were gone. You were, you, you were not even existing. You got dissolved in this beauty of this rose or in this rose. That getting dissolved in this rose is that unity that we're talking about. So as you begin to practice that in life, in a little segments. You don't have to dissolve in love all day because you've got other problems to deal with. But every moment that you find, get dissolved in beauty. 
Just not the rose, anything that exists. Look at something that you have not seen before, the way you've looked at it. I was looking at the, you know, the onion the other day, and I was thinking, wow, what a powerful thing it is. Can give life to another creatures, can give energy to me, and look at it, you know, this little thing. And I gotta tell you the other day, I was eating watermelon, and I thought, how much this watermelon is loving my eating it? Because has really spent all of these efforts to develop itself, to grow up, expand, become this big watermelon and this delicious everything. And now I'm really enjoying it because at the peak of its beauty, I'm, I'm utilizing that energy You're appreciating inside. it. You're appreciating it. Yeah, because if I don't, this thing is going to start stinking. It's going to get you know, sour. It's going to be useless. It's that not going to serve its purpose. Exactly. So it loves my use of it. Remember, everything that exists in this world is for us to love. And then we expand love. And as artists, that's how we create. It's not that I think, well, let me go in front of the painting and, and do the canvas and do this painting. I get overloaded with inspiration and then it's gonna come out. It's gonna bubble out. It's gonna, it's gonna bubble, bubble out. Over. Yeah. yeah. So it just pours out on writing, on the paintings, on sculptures, on architecture. Whatever I get to do, I just let it come out. And how, how did you start that, that you had this manifestation and you called it fusion art? And then you made it available to people to, to have this unity manifest through a canvas. How did that come about? It came about in, I think it was 1980s, that I began with this whole fusion art concept. And I th thought that, you see, the arts are dying as individual. The arts are united by themselves. The music and the, the theater and the dance and, and the images and all these are, are uniting together constantly. So I thought of a concept as it's the art of fusion. It's not about painting, it's not about music, it's not about anything. It's about art of fusing, art of bringing together, art of togetherness, and how we develop it in different worlds, in different, you know, media. And that's what was the concept behind fusion art. So fusion artists are not necessarily painters. They live to develop the concept of fusion, the concept of oneness. Their works represents that. And you've seen other fusion artists. Yeah, beautiful. And they're, they're all representing that, the oneness, fusing together. And, it, and it's really world, worldwide now. I mean, there are people in many, many countries, four or 500 people consider themselves fusion artists and, and are using that means to, to experience more unity, more harmony. Yeah, and they really, uh, they, they, they have developed the concept pretty well. And I have communication with many of them through emails, they send their paintings, I review it, discuss it with them. And everybody can do that to my website. They could just send it to, you know, artist at rasuli.com and then I would give them, you know, my idea about their work and how I feel about it and give them suggestions. But you do that. workshops all over now. Oh right? yeah, I do workshops, yeah. I just had one in Arizona. Uh, I have one tomorrow. It's a, it's a one day workshop. Starts from 10 in the morning to 10 at night. Wow. And this is for people who have not painted or have not created or they've, you know, they're having this whole block, creative block. So I, I work with them to develop this whole, to begin to remove the blocks so they could be expressing their, their uh, creative power. So if, if you had a, in a couple of minutes, help people remove the blocks to, to get them to the, that pure experience of the unity, that pure experience, what would be the first couple of things that you would suggest or 
you know, wanted to talk a little well, more. Well, the first question that I would ask is what, I, I want to find out what has caused the block. See, that makes a big difference. What has caused the block? Is it because that you were not satisfied with what you were doing? Is it because you were too satisfied with what you did? Sometimes I think that this is a masterpiece and I get so much entangled with the greatness of this that I cannot create anymore because they say, well, I can The ego freezes you. Exactly, freezes you. So that, that's another way. Sometimes it's the fear. Do you think people are aware of, of exactly what blocks them or would you have to like no, delve we, into No, that? I have to work with them. Actually, I, I, right I try to dig, dig through them what has caused it. And once I feel that, then it's so interesting because I let them discover it themselves. Right. I've got students that I haven't told him anything. And he's a great artist. And he's, a, he's a, a true fusion artist. And he comes to all my sessions, everything in there. But I see his direction and I'm watching where he's going. And I know where to give him little hints to guide him to the next level. All the fusion artists in the audience are thinking, who is that? No, yeah. <laughs> was that me? Oh my God. Did he say he when he meant she? <laughs> no, he said he actually, okay, all it's right. Felix. All you women know. Yeah, it's Felix and he's working. And he's see here. It. Yeah, he's here. So, okay. so that's All right, you, Felix, it's yeah. you. <laughs> so uh, different people have different causes of their blocks. And once you find what has caused it, then you got to remove that. And that, that's, a, you know, once you find out the reason, removal it is very easy. Sometimes when, when people tell me that, oh, I, I cannot paint and, and all of that, and I realize it's because of the ego, right. the first thing that I tell them, I want you to do five paintings, one after another, whenever you have time, and burn them. Five paintings to burn. Not to keep, not to put it on your wall, just five paintings to burn and destroy completely, and I want them to burn it, actually. And that's one of the things, after that five painting, that they, then they're free. Then they can easily play. Right. And they all tell me, you know, wow, now I can really enjoy it with doing what right. I'm doing. But there are many ways. You've got to find out what has caused the block and then work with that. Okay, you know, it's amazing. We're coming to the end of this show. We're going to have to do this again sometime. It's <laughs> yeah. really fun. All right, so Alan, 805-687-2053. 805-687-2053. We love you. Good night. God bless you.